our cry. God placed it there. We were born to become one with God. We were created so that God's bounteous love could be spilled over us and surround us. And God draws us ever more deeply into communion with all of life. We know that in any relationship, time and all the experience it holds leads to ever greater maturity so too in our relationship with God. Slowly we learn on this road of, to maturity that time with God need not be confined to a specific time in the day. The God we commune with is mysteriously present in all things. God is present within us and God is present outside of us. And God waits for us at every single turn and penetrates us with each intake of breath. And that's not enough. God embraces us in every single breeze. This understanding of prayer makes it more than a time set aside to focus on God, a separate and sacred activity distinct from the rest of our lives. We need that time, it's true. But because we know that God is an ever-present spirit, praying is also then an ever-present possibility. Because life is holy, therefore living it is a form of prayer. Because humanity is sacred, being human is a wordless statement of communion with the divinity. Though it is so important to set time aside to rest more consciously in our relationship with God, true prayer, which is a matter of relating to God's ever-present presence, has no time limits. I was on retreat and walking through the felt and I said to God, just now we'll have special time together. And God answered, all time is our time not just the hour you are now setting apart. St. Paul says, pray constantly. Okay, I hear you. This is impossible. And you may say, I have a thousand things to do. 
lots of problems to resolve. I cannot think of God and pray to God constantly. And you are quite right. We are not called to do this. Not even Jesus spent all his time in this kind of prayer. Constant prayer is not about a ceaseless flow of words or unending thinking or abiding feelings associated with God. No, rather, it is more about living daily in the awareness of the godliness of life. True prayer will transform every aspect of our lives, physical, mental and emotional. When I speak of true prayer, I really mean being totally honest with self and God. I remember a time in my life when I was very hurt and angry. Because I was taught that anger is not an acceptable feeling, I guiltily went to the chapel to offer this feeling to God as a sacrifice. I did not speak to God about the anger. I just confessed the anger and felt and left the anger. I just confessed the anger I felt and then left the chapel with the issue, of course, unresolved. Only pushed down, unconsciously making space for the next load of anger or negative feeling. But you know, the only trouble with this kind of thing is that anger and jealousy and envy and resentment become layers that bury true loving. The end result is walking without joy. It feels like being soulless, even though the lips may form a smile. A sense of hopelessness and despair hacks at the soul until in the end one may well feel like being a walking corpse, quite detached from life. But the good news is, God knows me as I am and loves me just as I am. This frees me therefore to be who I am in prayer. God knows all my feelings anyway, but the joy is that God also understands where I am. God's invitation is to come with all that is in the heart so that God can reach forth with love and gentleness and embrace and touch what is ever in the heart and whatever may need healing. But we are then called to take that into life and extend that healing to the other through dialogue and reconciliation, even if it calls for outside help. And this ends part one of talk four.